Hi everyone, I hope all of you are doing good. This is your English master and I am very glad to present my lesson through this virtual teaching. Today I am going to start a new topic, a new poem, the title, The Castle, written by Edwin Moyle. The Castle, the title itself says about uh, the protection for a nation. The castle, as you would have heard about this term, is a fort which is constructed in a country to protect from its enemy nations. So here a big castle has been uh, constructed and what does Edwin Moyer wants to convey through this title castle? That's what you're going to see in this poem. Generally Edwin Moyer is a Scottish uh, poet and here in this uh, poem the message which he wants to convey is about uh, being faithful to one's nation and how uh, being very strong and protective, being greedy will bring downfall to a nation. So here he says the country was having such a big uh, castle and there were many opening in this castle. The soldiers were in that opening and they were awaiting to meet any danger which comes from the enemy camp. The country leader was very strong, the people were very hard working. They had enough food for the countrymen. They wondered how can an enemy nation can come and attack our own nation when we are so strongly built. But unfortunately, there happened to be a wicked gate. In that, there was a wicked uh, gatekeeper. A old, uh, wizened gatekeeper happened to be there. He was greedy and the enemy utilized him. They gave him some gold. And because the gatekeeper was greedy, he got all those gold and he let all the enemy to enter through that small wicked gate. You would have seen a wicked gate. It is a very small gate which you can walk on either side, a small gate. And he happened to leave all the enemy camps inside. And thus it brought the downfall of the nation. Without any war, without any battle, in spite of having such a strong army or soldiers, the country his downfall happened because of the greediness of that old gatekeeper. This is what is the message which Edwin Moyer wants to convey through this poem. Let me read the poem for you once. I hope all the students are watching this video with your textbooks. Kindly follow while you read this poem and then let me explain each and every stanza to you. All through that summer, at ease we lay, and daily from the turret wall we watched the mowers in the hay. And the enemy had a, and the enemy half a mile away, they seemed no threat to us at all. The second stanza. For what we thought had we to fear, with our arms and provender load on load, our towering battlements, tier on tier, and friendly allies drawing near on every leafy summer road. The third stanza. Our gates were strong, our walls were thick, so smooth and high, no man could win. A foothold there, no clever trick could take us, have us dead or quick, only a bird could have gotten. The fourth stanza. What could they offer us for bait? Our captain was brave and we were true. There was a little private gate, a little wicked, wicked gate, a wizened warder let them through. The fifth stanza. Oh then, our maze of tunneled stone grew thin and treacherous as air. The cause was lost without a groan. The famous citadel overthrown. And all its secret galleries bear. The last and sixth stanza. How can this shameful tale be told? I will maintain until my death. We could do nothing being sold. Our enemy was gold. And we had no arms to fight it with. So that's the poem. Now let me explain uh, each and every stanza. The first stanza, the poet says, all through that summer, at ease we lay. During that summer season, we were living 
very happily and easily. That means we are living very comfortably and daily from the turret wall. Turret wall here it means a small tower on the top of a castle. On the top of the castle there will be small small towers placed. You would have seen that in a picture of a castle. And all the soldiers happen to place themselves there and watch for any arrival of their enemy. We watch the mowers in the hay. So they were very alert in watching the enemies. On the other side in the country, we were watching the mowers. No? Mower is something which is used to trim the grasses. So the people are working and cutting the mowers to make hay for the cattle. To, that is food for the cattle. And the enemy half a mile away, and the enemy was more than half a mile away, they seem no threat to us at all. We wondered how can an enemy come and attack us when our fort or the castle is so strong and the soldiers so dedicated and the people are working sincerely are very true to their leader and how can an enemy come and attack us? So that was the first stanza. And in the second stanza he says, for what we thought had we to fear. They wondered why should we have fear in our country when everything is right with our arms and provender arms, our soldiers our military is very strong and provender, provender here means food. When we have enough food in our own country and when we need not depend for food in other country, what is that to fear? Load and load, our food was load and load. That much food we have stored in the storehouse. Our towering battlements, our towering battlements. Kindly write the meaning there. Uh, tall towers with openings to shoot the enemies. So there, the opening in the uh, castle, the towering and the kind of uh, soldiers they had, tier on tier, one above the above, one above the another, uh, from the towering uh, uh, battlements. Here in the, uh, the bottom opening, one soldier was there, one second tier, third tier, each tier there happened to be a soldier. And so they thought, what, why should we have fear? And a friendly alleys drawing near, and we had many friendly countries around. On every leafy, leafy summer road, and there were so many countries supporting us. So what was the need for fear in our country? That's what the poet says in the second stanza. And in the third stanza, our gates were strong. Our gates, there was no opening for the enemy to enter. The gates were very strong. Our walls were thick. Our walls were very thick. Nobody can break it. So smooth and high, they were smooth, they were strong, smooth and they were very high. No man could win. So no man can win our country. A fool told there, no clever trick. A fool told there means he can't take any advantage position towards our country. No clever trick. Any clever trick he tries, any intelligent uh, thought comes to his mind, but that will never help him to win against his country. Could take us, have it dead or quick. Anything, any smart plan they do, that can never bring death to our country or downfall to our country. Only a bird could have gotten. But the only thing which can enter uh, to my country is a bird, which is not harmful. In the first three stanza, the poet tells about how safe is his own country. Now let, let's see what he tries to tell in the remaining three stanzas. In the fourth stanza, here it comes to say, what could they offer us for bait? But however strong we are, but what can we offer for bait? Bait here means something which is trying to deceive us. Something which tries to deceive us. See, there are things which deceive us, like money, isn't it? Wealth, etc. How can, what can, if somebody is going to be deceived by all those things, how can you win over them? So what could they offer us for bait? For greediness or when somebody is going to deceive us. Nothing could be done. But otherwise, our captain was brave and we were true. Our captain is very brave. He is prepared to face any battle. And we all are true to our captain. There was a little private gate. But only one small weakness which they had was they had a small private gate. Because they can't open the main entrance of people to enter always. Because they had to keep that bigger gate safe. One small gate was there and the poet here says it has a little wicked, wicked gate. Wicked gate. 
if you all would have known what's wicket gate wicket gate you know a small opening will be there you can uh, just push it will be like a uh, adjacent sides you can just turn that ga those gates and you can enter so he says that wicket gate is very wicked it is very bad why there stood in front of the wicket gate a wizened warder wizened warder means an aged guard an aged security was standing there let them through why does he call that wicket gate was um, wicked is because through that he was deceived by the enemy camp actually he was deceived because they were willing to offer him gold just for the sake of getting those gold he let the enemy through inside which the entire country was not prepared for these things for disloyalty and for greediness the country was not prepared for the fifth stanza oh then our maze of tunnel stone maze you would hear this maze maze it's you know that uh, the path will not be very clear it'll be a of confusing path only a person who's well versed in that place will know the path correctly the maze of tunneled stone tunnel stone means artificially tunnel inside they make a path and they store all the wealth of their country so through that maze all the enemy came through that maze they found the way even the enemy could find the way because that wicked uh, gatekeeper sent them inside and they happened to go through and their country became very thin like air which was very strong the, the castle had strong walls the, once the enemy went inside it became very thin and treacherous treacherous means disloyal like air it became very thin and treacherous the cause was lost without a groan they they, they couldn't many people couldn't understand how we were defeated because a battle should happen we should face them face to face and somebody loses they understand that we lost the battle they were very strong but here how they lost is not understood the famous citadel the famous citadel citadel here means the strong fort the strong castle is the citadel here the famous citadel was overthrown by some by one man's greediness and all its secret galleries bare and all the secret galleries so many secrets um, the the well the weapons everything which was kept all the galleries is bare now is empty now everything has been taken by the enemy and the last stanza how can this shameful tale be told the poet asked how can i tell this shameful to, uh, tale to somebody else can i tell this because i wanted to bring um, uh, will it bring any uh, privilege to my nation it only brings uh, a shamefulness to my nation how can i tell this i will maintain until my death i can't tell this i'll keep it with it with me until my death we could do nothing being sold for every other battle you can prepare yourself for being disloyal you can't do anything our enemy was told our enemy it didn't try to use any wealth or other things the only weapon which he used was gold to offer gold to one gentleman and we had no arms to fight it with and nobody can fight disloyalty you might have arms weapons to fight anything to face Uh, to win uh, someone by fighting face to face but you can never win this loyalty this is what edwin moya wants to pass through this particular poem the castle so being patriotic and being faithful to one's nation is very very important and we should never be deceived at the cost of one's nation we shouldn't be selfish as well so many things he tries to tell in this poem now before we wind up i would like to tell you other important uh, salient features in this poem uh, the first thing is the rhyming scheme in this poem the rhyming scheme you can see all this uh, six stanza is the same um, the first line if you can take uh, first stanza as an example the first line third line and fourth line rhymes together lay hey away and the second one and the last uh, fifth line rhymes together wall all so the rhyming scheme here will it will be a b a a b so this is the scheme which is followed in all the poem all the stanzas so this is the rhyming scheme in this poem and to add the figures of speech uh, you can also make a note uh, here 
uh, alliteration, there is alliteration as you all know, an alliteration in a, in a particular line, the two words, the beginning of two words will be very similar and that particular word will be a consonant sound. So one or two examples you can note down. The little wicked, wicked gate. Here wicked and wicked. The first letter W and W. So that is an alliteration. And also you can see in the wizened warder let them through. Here also again wizened warder. Here wizened and warder W and W. And in the other line, in the other figures of speech you can see um, there is like a little wicked, wicked gate. The figures of speech here is personification. What is personification? Showing a non-living thing or a dead thing like a living thing. That's what is called personification. Here, that wicked gate is shown like a person. And in the another line, uh, there is another figure of speech here. Ho oh, then are maze of tunnel stone. Here, uh, maze uh, is compared. The maze means it's not a clear path of tunneled stone. So, an artificial way. So, that path is compared the to a confused path. So, the figures of speech uh, here is metaphor. Grew thin and treacherous as air. Here, the figures of speech is uh, similarly. Uh, the country is compared to an air. Is compared like an air. So, it is similarly. And again, you can see another line. How, how can this shameful tale be told? Here, the figures of speech is personification. Because um, a shameful tale is, is, is shown like a person. And uh, there is also one more figure of speech. Our only enemy was gold. So gold is shown like an enemy. So that is another figure of speech that is personification. So I hope all of you uh, would have understood this poem. It is another uh, a very important message which the poet is uh, giving us through this poem. Uh, so as I say regularly, try to write the summary of this poem in your summary notebook. And keep it with you and collect it when you come back to school. So, I'll meet you again with yet another topic some other time. Until then, this is your English master, Saranachandar, signing out. Goodbye.